welcome back to my channel if you're new welcome what's up if you like my video so far please don't forget to hit subscribe so today i want to talk to you about how to start an at-home nail business and actually make some money so you've been doing nails you like it you want to pursue it as a career what are some of the things that you need to actually start an at-home business so first off your services what services are you going to offer are you only doing acrylic are you doing hard gel are you doing manicure pedicures you have to figure out a price list and a service list that will benefit all your customers you don't want to sell yourself short and not do certain services but then you also don't want to do anything that you don't feel comfortable doing when it comes to pricing your services this is a question that as a teacher i get asked a lot what do i charge for this what do i charge for that you have to price accordingly. Take a glance, go on Instagram. We all follow a lot of nail technicians. See what they're charging to get an idea. But then also too, you don't want to just go by the going rate. You want to charge by your area. You want to charge by your clientele. If your clientele is not can't afford $200 nails, then don't make your prices high. You have to charge accordingly for your customer base. Also, do not undervalue your skills, even though you might be in school or unlicensed or new and still kind of training. It's still time. It's skills. It's money that like you're investing into your craft. So you have to charge accordingly. No, we're not doing people's nails for ten dollars because they're a friend. They're getting the same service. Don't let them underestimate what you're going to be worth. Also, choose the services that are going to make you money. If you are only doing acrylic nails, that's fine. You can make money with acrylic. You can do nail art, that's fine. But also too, you wanna to consider other services. So I find that a lot of nail technicians don't wanna do pedicures. I don't mind doing pedicures. For me, pedicures are easy money. It's easy money. It's very simple. If the space that you're working in allows you to be able to do pedicures, I would highly recommend doing pedicures, especially with summer and spring coming around. It's definitely a good source of income just from doing pedicures alone we always want to make sure that our customers can have everything in one one shop so one stop shop that's that's the goal to always create they can come in get everything done multiple services and leave they'll spend all their money with you and not somewhere else also i see a lot of nail technicians stating they don't want to work over nail other nail technicians work i highly highly disagree with this statement First off, working over other people's work is an opportunity for you to gain clients. Let them see what these nails, if they're bad, what they should look like, what they could look like. They'll see their nails and say, oh, she didn't do that. She didn't do this. Oh, look at the shape. That's coffin. I asked for that. And she didn't give me that before. Now you gain the client. By making your client soak off and doing full sets every time, one is damaging to their nail. They should not be soaking off their nails for every technician that they come to. And it's a way to show them your skill. Fix the work that another technician did or enhance the work that another technician did. So you always wanna be able to say, I'll work, I'll do a fill in over somebody's work. If you feel some type of way about it, then you can always just charge a little fee for it. That, that's your call if you feel like you wanna make some more money. So next, some essential startup items. So you have a small space, I don't know if you're in your bedroom, you wanna turn your garage, whatever your case may be. So some essentials that you need to start would be obviously you need a nail table. You can get a decent sized one on Amazon. They usually call them manicure tables. Um, you need a nice chair for your client. You need a nice chair for yourself. You're gonna need like an armrest for them, light, storage. You're gonna need your e-files. You can play around. I don't know if you've been playing around with nails and you probably already have an idea of the type of e-file and files that you like. You're gonna need some sanitation um, container, sanitation container, some wipes, the acrylic, all the products that you're gonna need for your enhancements and the proper brushes for those. Some place to store your brushes on your table, ideally little containers that can kind of keep everything on your table nice and neat. Uh, UV lamp is something we're gonna need all the nail art stuff, if you're gonna be doing rhinestones and foil, you wanna have a decent selection. I wouldn't say break the bank in starting up, but you wanna just have a little bit of everything just so that you can offer it. Then when you start to get that feel of what your clients start to like, then okay, they like foil a lot. Let me invest some more in foil. Everybody, nobody's doing rhinestones. So 
So stop spending your money on rhinestones. Don't go out and buy everything and don't underdo it as well. You want to get a little bit to do everything. And if you are dealing with Amazon, like I primarily do, we know Amazon Prime comes in two days. So it's no big deal if from Monday to Thursday you, you run out of rhinestones, you can we just reorder some more. So those are some essential things that you need. Polish is something else that you're going to need. You need to have a decent selection of gel polish. You want to be able to give your clients a good selection. Um, how I went about this when I started my nail room is I wanted to, I didn't want to, it's too costly to buy just one polish. I was trying to buy something in bulk that would give me, I ended up going to McCart and Beatles on Amazon. They have the mini bottles, which surprisingly, they lasted a while. I didn't think they would. And I'm pretty busy and I use my colors a lot. So they did last a, lot, a long time. That was a good way. They're about, I think it's like $27 and you get like 24 colors in a set. But it was a good way to say, okay, I'm going to take like a hundred bucks and just get colors. But I had colors and I only bought for that season. I wasn't thinking about fall next season. I was thinking about what I need right now from the day that I start the colors that my clients would like. Um, also too, you want to make sure that you're choosing brands that you're familiar with. If I've never worked with Young Nails Acrylic or Beatles Polish or something, I'm not going to just buy it in bulk. I'm going to buy a little bit of something to test out the product. All these companies, Valentino, Young Nails, Kiara Sky, all these big brands, they always have some type of sale. Wait for the sale and invest in a small amount. Work with it. Ideally, I like to test products out on myself because I'm very rough with my hands. Or choose a designated friend or family member to say, you know, let me do a, a full set on you and then I'll fill it in in a couple weeks. And then we'll see how the product works. Is the product good? Is it bad? Use somebody as a guinea pig or yourself to kind of test out your products before you invest all your money into just buying all of one brand. Don't go buy what if you see on YouTube. A lot of new nail technicians are on YouTube. I'm not trying to say don't, don't change the channel. I'm not trying to say don't listen to YouTube people. But I always ask my students, you're using these products, but why? Why are you using your products? So you need to know why you're using what you're using, not just because you saw them use it, but because it's popular. Also too, to start up, you're gonna need some type of booking system. So one thing that I like to pride myself in is being very professional. I don't care, I'm not knocking anybody. I don't care for the whole DM me for an appointment. One, if you are somebody that's gonna get busy, that can be very overwhelming to have all these people messaging you. I want this, I want this, I want to book this, I want this day, okay, can I change my appointment? How much is this, how much is that? If you were to invest in a nice booking system, all your services, all your prices will be laid out for you. The only time somebody's gonna DM you is if they're confused in booking or they have some type of questions. So I do ideally like a booking system. It lays everything out for you. It's very professional. It's just a better look for somebody that says, I want to actually start a business. Also, too, booking systems are good for tracking purposes. They'll track your money. They'll track your appointments. I personally use Salsi. It'll tell me what services are most booked, how much I made this month, how much I made this week. I have everything right there for me in the booking system. You can find something there like Booksy. There's Salsi. There's a lot of different apps. I mean, you can do a trial run. You can just invest for a month. If Salsi charges, I think, $35 for uh, membership. If I didn't like it, then I'm going to cancel it in a month and try something else. You know, I'm not going to sign up for a year subscription, but like I said, baby steps. So you want to just figure out which system works for you. Look at the in and ins and out. Can I check people out with this system as well is another one. A lot of people like to pay with cards. So can I, is it only going to be cash? Is it only going to be this? So on and so forth. But I do think a, a booking system is ideal if you're going to take this serious. Next thing money management. So when it comes to doing nails, yes, it's a nice side hustle. If you're doing something, if it's going to be your side hustle, if it's going to be your full time job, there comes a time where Uncle Sam wants their money. And a lot of people think this is off the book, so I don't need to report it. I'm going to tell you you're wrong. So for tax purposes, what you need to do is create a separate you from your business separate for all money. This means if you're accepting payments through Cash App, Zelle, bank accounts, anything you do, there should be you and your stuff and your business. 
So that way, if I look at my Cash App, everything is nail related. My Zelle, everything is nail related. Chanel and Keisha are two different people. Keep it separate. So when it comes time to file your taxes, I know, once again, back to the booking system, keeping track of that. And then also the cash payments, I'm keeping track of that. It makes it so much easier for you to track your money. You want to know what goes in, what goes out for expenses. Everything that I buy for my nails comes from a separate bank that is for nails only. All the money made from nails goes into that account. Like I said, me, I'm separate than nails. So you want to keep it very different because what could happen is now you're spending, you don't know what you're spending and making because it's all coming from the same thing. You might have your own personal job doing direct deposit then you have money shooting in this and someone's selling this and then you move the money from cash app here and then you're buying products on Amazon there. You're going to get lost. And also too, you're going to start to figure out, did I actually make any money? It's not so easy to see it if everything is combined. You want to be able to distinctively say, okay, I had income of this, I spent this, so on and so forth. Another thing you have to realize too is how do you pay yourself? You are a business owner, you're self-employed, you're making money, but you need to know how to pay yourself. So you have to figure out one, how much do you need to survive? Everybody's scenario is different. How much is your rent? How much is this? How much do you really need to put aside? If this is something that's side for you, then you can kind of keep it off to the side and pay yourself smaller if your normal job is, is, is enough. If this is gonna be your only job or your primary job, you need to figure out how much do I need in a month to survive? How much to put away and how much am I gonna invest back into my business when it comes to buying products so on. For example, if you're making $2,000 in a month, let's say you keep $1,000 for yourself, 200 is gonna go back into the business, I'll re-up on anything that I need, and then the remaining 800 is gonna stay in the bank. As that number grows, those figures will change, and that's just an example. But you always wanna just say, I'm gonna keep this for myself and this and keep it very separate. You don't wanna take all the money and throw it back into products, or I'm gonna keep all the money, I'm just swiping away. Because like I said, we're gonna keep it very separate. Managing your money is very important because you'll end up seeing, wow, I'm actually spending a lot more than I really did, or damn, I didn't make any money this month because your numbers were all off and all your personal and your business is all into one. So lastly, we all know how to market ourselves. We have social media, there's YouTube, there's Instagram, there's TikTok, there's so many different ways to market yourself. Just make sure a couple of things I want to point out, a couple of helpful tips in marketing is a lot of people love to use hashtags. Always use hashtags, they're good. But you also want to um, be mindful of the hashtags you're using. You don't want to use just hashtag acrylic nails. How many millions of people are writing hashtag acrylic nails? So what's going to happen is you're going to fall and, and get lost and no one's ever going to see a picture. You want to be very precise. I'm going to say Florida nails. I'm going to say or your city's nails or your town's nails. We don't want to be so broad with our hashtags. We want to pop out and possibly get on the explore page. Also changing your hashtags. Every picture should not be the same hashtag. I actually keep a list in my phone of different hashtags, um, different groups of hashtags. And every two to three pictures that I post, I have different hashtags. So it ends up being cycled and some are seen more than others, but I always want to keep it different. And also too, I read somewhere that Instagram, if you are doing the same hashtags, I think they end up like tossing the picture on, not cycling it as much because it ends up becoming almost like spam to them. So you want to be mindful of that. You can also look on YouTube. Uh, there's a lot of videos. I've seen a lot of helpful tips on how to market yourself on Instagram and stuff for your business. Also posting. You need to post at least three to four times every day. Keep yourself in people's minds, out of sight, out of mind. So I want to post constantly, whether I'm posting a funny nail meme or I'm posting new products or I'm posting a new service that I'm offering, or I'm just saying, I'm saying something, whether it's in my story or it's on my page, I'm saying something every day. Three to four times is a lot, it's committing, but remember, this is your business, and no one's gonna care about your business more than you. So you have to put the work in if you wanna reap the benefits. Also, another way to build your business is to get certified or licensed in another specialty. A lot of people are multi-talented. They wanna do hair, they wanna do lashes. Lashes are super big right now, and eyebrows and microblading and all that stuff. Take a class, get certified, because again, 
as we're doing more in one place, our customers are able to come in, get their nails done, get their feet done, get their lashes done, get their lip waxed, one stop. And who's going to keep all that money from it? You will. So you always want to be able to offer your clients as much as possible to make it more easier for them and eventually end up making more money. Also taking classes, just regular classes, whether it's to be certified or not, we can always educate ourselves. I've been doing nails for over 15 years and there's not enough information that I can gain. Things are always changing, trends are always popular, there's always something that we can take from this industry as it grows. So always further educate yourself, I can't say that enough. You always wanna be on top of what's in, what's out, and be on top of it meaning before it becomes popular. Don't wait till it's a fad to all of a sudden start doing it. You want to be on top of your game. Be the first to try something or to bring something to the table. And most importantly, it's so many unlicensed nail technicians. Go to school, get your license. I'm a teacher at a beauty school and the enrollment for nails has been crazy within the past few years. So many girls and guys want to do nails. I love it. But at the same time, you have to be licensed. I'm gonna tell you now, to get caught working without a license is thousands of dollars, penalties and fines, and honestly, it's not worth it. We don't wanna put all of this in just to be shut down or on pause because you got caught working without a license. There's many schools around the country. A lot of them are virtual. My school right now is actually virtual. We're teaching online. And you can easily get a license. The program is 250 hours in New York, I'm in New York State. Go get your license. It takes nothing. Especially if you already know how to do nails, go for the education. You'll be so surprised what you learn. I love teaching. I love teaching my students about things that they don't even think about. Everybody comes to school thinking, I just want to do nails. But they forget the school part of it. So you will learn some stuff about the acrylic and the chemicals behind it. So you can educate your clients and educate yourself. If you're thinking about doing an at-home business, I hope this video helped you out. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget to like this video. And if you want to see how I started my at-home nail business, you can click above and I have a room tour of my nail room. Thank you for watching. Bye.